I'm, I'm, I'm Dilu, and I'm planning to talk about uh, uh, why mobile app developers should have a serious look at Flutter. Yeah. Before start off, start off with things. Uh, anyone who has experience with Flutter? Okay. So yeah, it's cool. It's great to see that uh, all of you guys are new, and uh, because uh, I can give you the actual uh, thing behind that, why uh, as mobile developers, why we should uh, have a at least look at Flutter. So, so this is basically about me. I'm uh, I'm currently studying at IIT. And uh, I'm part of GitHub Campus Expert program. Also, I'm a trainee associate software engineer at Zone 24/7. And we uh, like recently initiated Colombo Flutter meetup at Sri Lanka. That's the first ever meetup in Sri Lanka. So, and these uh, stuff are, I'm kind of part of, and I'm I'm contributing to these organizations as well. So yeah, before before moving to Flutter, you know, like uh, nowadays we have this. Uh, we we already had the mobile application development, right? So uh, yeah, before before I I thought of like uh, before going jump into Flutter. If you can have a kind of a look at how mobile application development so far, then you can get the actual idea why I'm telling that you should have a serious look at Flutter. Okay, so yeah, when it comes to mobile application development, so we we have this uh, three platforms, right? So we have Android. They they released their SDK back in 2009. So we have iOS. They released their first SDK in back in 2008. Uh, and uh, Windows. Are we have? Do we have any Windows developers now? Ah, okay. We have uh, quite uh, very low number of developers for Windows. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's why I put the logo there. So I, I want to, like uh, moving on. I'll only talk about these two because like uh, uh, without comparing with Windows and stuff. So uh, basically, these are the major platforms that we are using today, right? The Android and the iOS. So like uh, when it comes, e even you are an Android or iOS developer, anyway, you have to go go through these layers because like that's that's the very high level. Layers that uh, you have to go through in your application. So, like, if we if we consider about the layers, like in the uh, top part, we have this uh, uh, widgets which renders your UI, whatever the thing that the users interact with. So that we in iOS side we have the Cupertino widgets. In Android side we have Material widgets with they they recently came up with these Material principles and all the stuff that uh, to make sure that uh, users are uh, happy with the UI. So uh, yeah, then then the second layer we have the core services, and also in the Android size we have the application and the frameworks. So moving on the uh, third layer, that's that's uh, uh, kind of important because we have the core OS in the iOS side. Comparing to iOS, the uh, Android side we have the libraries and the runtime. So uh, and uh, the bottom bottom layer we have the kernel drivers in iOS as well as in Android side. We have Linux kernel and the device drivers. So th this is a very very high level thing. So like uh, like j if you are just uh, thinking about the native application development, like in this part I'm I'm talking about applications for single platform. Basically like if you are developing application for iOS, that means a single platform, right? So uh, that uh, then again the, like if we consider a kind of high level architecture diagram. So this uh, the, here you have this uh, your application. Which was written in uh, Java, Kotlin, or Shift. Earlier days, we we used Objective C, uh, and uh, in the the other part, we have the the OEM widget box where you renders the UI. So your application code directly communicates with the OEM widgets in order to uh, render the UI. And also, they have the canvas and events in the same layer, in the same uh, level. And uh, whenever your application wants to use any of the location services or Bluetooth services, or else assume that your project is using any other sensors like. Uh, uh, any any sensor like you want to access any sensor, we we call, we call it call them through the services. So this is kind of a very high level thing about uh, uh, native application development or this application for single platforms. So whatever we do and uh, whatever the platform we are talking about, everything has a cost has cost and pros, right? So uh, these are some of the pros that I noticed in. Uh, Single applications for single platform or the native applications. So, like most of the people telling that uh, native applications are fast. So th that's 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 a key thing that hybrid applications are trying to achieve. So and it's 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 also re responsive. So also it's it, it has continuous support. Yeah, because uh, most of the native language native uh, applications develop uh, with big brands, right? Android side we have uh, uh, Google. In the uh, uh, iOS side we have the Apple. So. Uh, and also the variety of features that we have, because we have already proven that Android applications or iOS applications, that, that's what today we are using, right? So it's already proven. And the community, that's, that's the big, biggest part. So we, we have a lot of developers who have specialized in these areas, or Android or either iOS. So moving on to the cons side, 
the best, uh, the major thing that I, I see as, as a, assume you are a startup. You, you, you want to start a startup, you just want to make sure that uh, you build mobile apps. So in your early stage or uh, assume that uh, you want to uh, develop application for your freelance project or something like that. In that way that uh, having two code bases, having two languages, uh, it, it's the same case that every uh, uh, technology for multi-purpose, that, that, that's what they are. They're okay. Okay. That's, that's the selling point, right? That's, that's how they promote it. So you, you have one code base for both applications. That's the, anyway, I listed the same thing here. Also like maintaining two, uh, two, uh, two different projects and uh, two different set of developers for both projects, it's, it's again, it's a disadvantage. Assuming as a large scale company or a large product based company, so it's, it's a disadvantage. So, and also developing, uh, uh, I don't know whether you, you guys have uh, uh, experience that developing uh, features in a synchronous way, it's somewhat hard when com coming to a native application. So that, that, that part also I, I mentioned here, it's like uh, very, very, if you're developing a kind of a feature in very synchronously, you have to put some effort there. So the, uh, the next thing, like we, we had the applications for single platform. Then the, uh, this, uh, one, of the like one of the diagrams which shows the uh, applications for multi-platforms, it has like basically, it's a kind of summary. So in this side, we have, uh, the, we have basically two approaches, hybrid or the cross-platform approach. Maybe you guys are like very uh, familiar with these technologies. So uh, one of these technologies. So uh, in a, if you are considering about hybrid approach, we have the, uh, 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 what do you call, the, uh, the, the application which was written in uh, one of the markup languages, like HTML, CSS2, at uh, styles, and we, we use JavaScript or a scripting language to add our logics and stuff. So, and also there are famous stuff like Cordova, PhoneGap, and Ionic. Ionic is one of the very famous stuff for hybrid when it comes to a hybrid approach. Then, then uh, the, the other side is uh, cross-platform approach. So in, in cross-platform approach, we, we had uh, maybe, uh, have you ever noticed that we have two parts, reactive and non-reactive? Okay, so uh, moving on, the, these, these non-reactive stuff, other than Samarina, I don't know whether anyone has used App Accelerator? Anyone? Okay, so it's, it's under the uh, non-reactive part. So uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's basically something uh, similar to uh, React Native, but it's, it's a more uh, kind of a, it's not uh, developed in a very good way like React Native. So, but the main react, re reason React Native came up with, they have then, that reactive components. So, uh, in the other part, the non, in the non-reactive side, we have Samarine. Anyone that work with Samarine? Okay. So, Samarine is again we, when you are developing large-scale, highly scalable uh, mobile applications, we use Samarine, which which uh, written in C sharp or and uh, to the UI you can even use ASP.NET as I guess. I have never worked with Samarine, but uh, I know the Samarine is there in the non-reactive side. So, any Java React Native developers? Okay, cool. So React Native is there. It, it's Google Flutter also there in the same same area. So uh, I'll, I'll talk about React Native and Google how how Flutter how how it differs in in my next slides. So and we have the native JavaScript for write applications. So th these are kind of uh, technologies that we are using to try that uh, like uh, to uh, to make sure that we can write applications for multi platforms. So okay. So again, like uh, before moving to in detail stuff, this very high level architecture about hybrid approach. Uh, can you realize what's the difference between the previous native architecture and this one? Anyone? Yeah, yeah, bridge is there. Again, we have uh, replaced the OEM widgets with something called WebView. So this is kind of a thing which runs on your browser. So it's, it's, it's basically uh, we develop a application without thinking it as a web application. At the end of the day, it's a mobile application, but still, we use a web view to render our things. So uh, that way only we can co communicate with the canvas or the events. And uh, whenever the application, your hybrid approach application uses any of the uh, sensors, as in Bluetooth sensors or GPS or something, we have to go through this bridge because it can't directly communicate with uh, the uh, markup languages or the uh, JavaScript languages. I'm not talking about the React Native. This is uh, something about the hybrid approach like Ionic or something like that. We have this bridge in between these two steps. So moving to the pros and cons, the uh, yeah, yeah, the pro, pro, pros, when it, in, in the pros side, we have a very good thing. 
we, we can do uh, CI integrations, continuous integrations. So uh, because uh, we, we develop our application in the same way we develop a web app. It's something similar to that. So even you can use your application as a web application. At the end of the day, if you, you have to change a bit of UI, and you have to make sure that uh, some stuff are match mapping your browser screen. So that way, you can make sure that uh, you can use the application as web application as well at the end of the day. So, and also, we can use uh, continuous integration. That's, that's one of the key things, one of the key, one of the key pros in a hybrid approach. So uh, moving on to the con site, it's, it's, it's relatively slow. Because why? Like OEM widget, it renders the native components, right? In uh, con site, but uh, in uh, this, uh, this hybrid approach, what we have is a web view. So it has to make sure that uh, the UI renders through a web view or in, inside the browser. So in that case, it, it, you, it causes some of the slowness in the application. Maybe you guys will uh, experience uh, lags, not for like smaller, small applications, but when it comes to large scale stuff, when we will experience those stuff. So it, it, uh, it, it is one of the key points for poor user experience, as I, I, as I think. So Moving on, this uh, cross-platform approach. This this kind of a high-level, very high-level architecture for cross-platform appro approach. So we have the transferred native code in our left side, in my left side. So uh, the framework libraries and the SDK is for non-reactive part. Then the, this uh, it's it's this part is not basically a bridge, but uh, we have something called JavaScript bridge. But in React Native, this is a very uh, React Native have a very improvement way, improved way of uh, communicating with uh, uh, the OEM widgets or the services. But still, uh, just to give you an idea about cross-platform approach, the entire technologies that we have in the cross-platform section, so it's something like this. So uh, in, in uh, cross-platform, did you, did you notice that we have, again, we have the OEM widgets. Because the React kind of native, like uh, and technologies like React Native, they can now they can render native components as well. So, uh, so th then again, that we, we uh, in this case, we we uh, we have achieved that uh, fast the fast point right the the native applications are fast they are saying because because they they render native components so uh, that that thing we can achieve here as well but not to that level like uh, we we uh, we experience in native applications but still we have the om widgets at the end of the uh, reactive applications so uh, here also in order to uh, call with services like we just have to go through it rx bridge the so called javascript bridge and uh, the reactive part. So in, in that bridge, we have both non-reactive and reactive because in cross-platform approach, some of the stuff are non-reactive and some of the stuff are reactive. So this is the part for reactive stuff, and that's the part for non-reactive stuff. So yeah, ah, OK. I have uh, the same same thing, right? Not the same thing. It was a mistake. So I'll uh, just keep it like that. So if I'm talking about the pros and cons in here, so I, I already mentioned that. Uh, uh, we have OEM widgets, so at the end of the day, we we render uh, the uh, same native components. So it's the look and feel somewhat uh, similar to native components. The way it renders through the hardware, it's somewhat similar to the native components. So even when you're accessing the services, it's uh, it's uh, way easier than the hybrid approach in these things. If you are considering about the cons in this approach, still that we can't achieve uh, uh, the. F uh, Frame rendering speeds, like uh, assume like the in native applications we have 53 to 55 FPS. If you are if you are planning to render something in that that FPS count, we we can render up to 55. But in uh, this this approach, I think uh, in uh, uh, cross-platform approach, we only have, can reach up to 51 or 50. So that's that was one of the major co like uh, cons in uh, hybrid approach. So if assume that you want to render kind of a very uh, graphics, uh, uh, very rich graphics uh, application. So it's very hard to render stuff. You, you will realize the lags are there, the colors and colors are coming, and it's still trying to get, render the colors. So those kind of stuff are there. So if you jump into Flutter, I'll, I'll talk about in a very brief way about the Flutter architecture. But this is the exact uh, very high level architecture for Flutter. The Flutter has native ARM binary code. We, one, what, what the one you write with uh, the Dart language. So Flutter uses Dart so, uh, for the, as the language. And they, they convert it to a native binary ARM code at the end of the day. So, uh, and they have Flutter widgets. Flutter widget in, includes, maybe you guys have realized that uh, in OEM widgets, we had Cupuccino and 
uh, material both. So in same way, in Flutter, we have this uh, Cooper Genuine material widgets as uh, as an inbuilt thing in Flutter. So, and we have something called platform channels where they release all the plugins, libraries to in order to achieve the services and all stuff. So this doesn't work as a uh, bridge because it doesn't convert anything. It's, you can just uh, import the plugin or the library and you can directly call to the services. So yeah, Flutter runs on. So as Google says, the Flutter runs on Jelly Bean, Android Jelly Bean, up to uh, the, even it runs on ARM devices, ARM devices, and uh, up to 4.1. So from beginning from 4.1, the latest version, to the latest version. So in iOS side, we have, we can, Flutter supports iOS 8 or the newer versions. Also, the minimum uh, hardware it runs on iPhone 4S. So you can develop your application, you don't need to uh, worry about the older phones or the older devices. So if we consider about the, the path, the Flutter came. So Google unveiled Flutter in 2015 during the Dart Summit, the Dart Conference, or the Dart Dev Summit. So, and, and then uh, they released their uh, first alpha version in uh, 2017, back in 2017. Then uh, the 2018 was one of the uh, most uh, successful years for Google. They, they, the Flutter team announced the uh, uh, preview to the most stable version, where I jumped into Flutter and try some code and uh, try some applica uh, tried some application. So it, it was a very stable version where the developers, developers started to where the developers started to uh, play with Flutter and uh, 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 what do you call, to make uh, nice things in Flutter. So then they realized the, the current version is uh, only have few, uh, few uh, fixes. So they released the version one back in 2018, December. So, and we are waiting for something called Hummingbird. Without explaining about Hummingbird, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll keep that part for the uh, last slides. So I'll, I'll jump into Hummingbird in, in my last slides. So, so what is Flutter? So if I'm giving up just a, a short answer, it's the latest mobile SDK that was uh, developed by Google Flutter team uh, to, uh, to develop high quality applications or high quality UIs. Use, like it, it can achieve very high quality stuff, basically. I, I'll talk about the FPS rate the Flutter can achieve and all in later. So it supports both Android and iOS devices. Anyone in future, there's, there's a project called Project Hummingbird. That, that, that's what I was showing in my, uh, the, uh, this diagram. So they are, they, are, they are jumping to Hummingbird in order to make sure that you only write once. You covered everything. So yeah, as I told, it's, it's write, write once, run both. This is not a big, big, uh, big thing, right? It's not magic. It's happening in every uh, cross-platform or hybrid approach application. So it's one code base. So uh, one code base maintain, and also in Flutter you have expressive, beautiful user interfaces. Some some of the parts are very uh, very useful. I'll I'll talk about those useful stuff. For now, it's uh, very expressive and uh, uh, beautiful. So it has quick development. So uh, the things comes under quick development is like uh, you know that uh, Flutter has something called hot reload and hot restart. Whenever you you change application, assume like uh, you got into error. And you fix that. I'll show you kind of demo. So uh, you fix that. You assume that you need to change the entire app bar color, in or app bar color, or, or a com complete widget, or kind of thing, a complete part of your application. So you just it's it's just you change it, and one click on the host or re reload button, it will appear. There's no delay between the rendering and the uh, change. You the moment you change the thing, you just press on the hot reload or con command R. It it will build. It won't show you any progress li lines or anything. It's, it's that quick. So if you're looking to some kind of a, that thing, this, this kind of a demo project, once you created a, the uh, new Flutter project, they are giving, Google giving this demo project which has the counter. You can press on a button and increase the number. So uh, I'll, I'll, Yeah, I have uh, a Pixel and the uh, iPhone XR, which runs with uh, iOS 12.1. This is the first time I'm running this application, so uh, this project. So uh, 
in the first time it will take some time as usual but uh, for further development when you are working with the application it won't take uh, a lot of time okay so uh, until it loads or it, until it uh, yeah, yeah 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 sure Yeah. Yeah. You you want to uh, uh, write one code base, yeah. and you need to uh, deploy it through your mobile phone, yeah. and also then as the desktop. Okay, that's why I told the hummingbird. There are a lot of surprises in hummingbird side. So uh, just wait for hummingbird project slide. So uh, okay, now it's I think okay. Th this application which gives the, the they gives us they give us as the demo application. So you can just press on a button and increase the number. That's that's the demo application. So uh, uh, you can see here the color is blue, right? The uh, the entire application or the App bar uh, color is blue. So uh, how do I show you uh, the? Okay, this way you can see how quick Flutter is. So assume you want to change this into red. Now it made my change. Did you realize that? You may think that Android Studio also has that same button, but what it does is it renders the entire application again. So in in a uh, in Android, maybe you guys have experienced the same button is there, the the, the uh, kind of that button. So what what Android does is they uh, they build the complete application again. But what Flutter does, it identifies the widget which change which, which we change, and it only renders that widget. So it, it maintains something called states. So it's just refresh the state. That's it. Instead of building the entire application, it refreshes the state which uh, which uh, which uh, what do you call which uh, which uh, which which uh, which helps to uh, change the color to in order to blue from blue to red. So so okay, I'll, I'll quickly go like uh, since I have very limited time. So Flutter Flutter has something called in Flutter every UI a button or whatever the thing we use, it's everything we call as a Flutter widget. So in Flutter, maybe a button or a menu, it, it's a widget in a, a font color scheme or whatever the padding stuff. Uh, aspect of layout, all those stuff are uh, widget, uh, widget. Even if you assume like you want to capture a tap gesture, use a ca capture, use a tap or something like. Even it's a widget, so you can have so, hell a lot of uh, uh, widgets in, in inside your widget folder, so you can reuse them. Assume like you, you are creating a custom button, and you don't need to uh, write it twice, or you just need to, you just need to, don't need to uh, just import it everywhere. You just create a f f widget, widget inside the widget folder, just use it everywhere. So basically, what's a widget? If you are considering this uh, this part, the app bar is a widget, and the the hello world text, uh, it's 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 again another widget. So the scaffold, there's something called scaffold when you are creating the scaffold is a widget, and the entire application is again widget. So if you want to use this entire page, you can you just have to take the upper widget and you can use it. So they maintain something a widget tree. You can see like uh, uh, in this case we have a card card widget. And this is a widget tree. Since uh, my uh, very, uh, I have very only very short time. I'm moving on very fast. So this you have, you can just go through the Flutter widgets. Uh, you can just search for Flutter widgets. There are a lot of widgets they have coming up with. The everything, the shapes, and also everything is widgets. So they maintain the states. You know, to I, I told you guys, right? Instead of rebuilding the same application, the entire application, they only refresh the state related to that part or your change. So this is one of the key points that Flutter. It's it's capable of 60 FPS, and you guys do you guys have an like do you guys have uh, hear about Razer phones, which you use to uh, render games or graphics? It has 100 FPS capable screens. So even Flutter supports 120 FPS using the version one. So this high level architecture this is there in the documentation. We just have three main parts: the Dart framework, the Flutter en engine, and the platform specific stuff. This there in the documentation, the entire diagram. 
So Flutter does not use OEM components. I was talking about this. So Flutter uses Dart. So because it, it if you are really comfortable with the o, o, OOP related language, object oriented language, it's really uh, it's really uh, the learning curve is very small. You can just uh, uh, learn Flutter within one week or two weeks, and just you can play and you can may, may develop beautiful apps. So it has fast allocation and uh, predictable high performance. The object orientation is there, and the developer productivity. So yeah. In Flutter, you can achieve the both native experience. In Android side, even you can write the if you want to see the native Android look and feel instead of your custom feel uh, look and feel. So you can have that also in Flutter. It's built in, so it's free and open source. Even you can change the code and try out new things. So you can use this language. These are the people who use Flutter. The Alibaba application they entirely moved to Flutter because of the rendering time. Uh, because of 100 F, uh, 120 FPS, the Alibaba is using 120 FPS to in order to render their uh, uh, mobile application. Google Ads now we use Flutter, and these two Hamilton. Maybe you guys have used Hamilton, so they are also using even, even the JD. So big brands are there; they are moving to Flutter. So one more thing, that's what I was talking about. So with the Hummingbird project, Flutter is capable of one code base, a Windows application for your desktop. A macOS application for your desktop, an application for IoT devices, and also an application for your mobile devices. So only one code base covering everywhere. So waiting for Hummingbird project. It's under development now. So uh, next big thing in next December. So you can write one code base and have five or six apps for every platform. Isn't it cool? That's why I'm telling. Start have a serious look at Flutter. Start learning Flutter. It's 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 kind of an investment. You can just move to Flutter in next December. So this one of the applications which we developed. Can you see that shape? How hard it is in, how hard to achieve that shape in, uh, uh, what do you call in uh, Android? You have to have uh, import asset. You have to de design it using a designer, or you have to get help from designer. So the thing is there, but still. So uh, in Flutter, there's something called GClipper. Just import GClipper. You can draw the shape. You you give the points zero zero that point and this. And you can just curve and they just and all. It's simple. It's inbuilt. You don't have to import anything from outside. That's why it's fast. So we'll, I, I'll show you guys a kind of a quick uh, how fast same application. I, I developed the same application using Android. And uh, see the same shape and the same home screen. How fast Flutter is. See, the shape is there. I'm importing the shape. I'm designing the shape, and I'm importing it to Flutter. The shape is already done. There we go. I was using the same laptop. I, 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 I tried using same internet connection, same, everything same. Even the room temperature is same, same place. It's done. Two thousand years yeah. later. Okay. Oh, okay. So you can realize, like, if you are working on a large scale project, how fast Flutter is. So, yeah, yeah. That's that's the end of my. Uh, uh, that's the last last slide of my uh, presentation. So yeah, the hummingbird. Just jump jump into Flutter and try out some stuff because hummingbird is on the way. When you have hummingbird, it's 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 going to be a real cool thing, and it's from Google. Yeah. Thank you very much.